everybody. Welcome to episode number 21 of One Degree of Scandalous with Cato Kalin and Tom Zenner. Yes, One Degree of Scandalous. Episode 21, like you're in Vegas, Tom. 21 was the age I did my birthday in Vegas. 21, baby. 21. Okay, are you serious? Yeah. Milwaukee to Vegas at the age of 21? No, I was there even before. Oh, that's Actually, right. I you were already I, out I, here probably, weren't you? the fake ID. I looked very young, but I did the, the gamble. I remember it was only a, when you bet a dollar in blackjack, it was a big time. That's how old I am. So uh, that's a long time ago. I love blackjack. Roll it. Uh, all, everything on green. Everything on blue. Everything on whatever. You know, I always I always push back the taping of the podcast at least an extra day after the Packers lose. Are you okay? I mean, I, I, back-to-back losses to New York teams yeah, that York, supposedly suck? Come New, on. New York teams own Green Bay. They lost to the Giants in a playoff. They they seem to always lose to the Jets. And uh, Believe it or not, the Jets are always tough against them, and they're an awful team. But now they're not awful. Every, everything's great in Philadelphia. Everything's great in New York now. It's that change is happening. The change is happening. In Everybody sports. thought the AFC West was going to be so good, and it's not. The NFC West isn't that good. No. Everybody thought the NFC East would suck, but we don't have to make this NFC a sports show. North but I'm worried too. about you got to have a plan B for a team. Just in case. Just in case. By the way, would you ever turn on the Packers like you do on the Brewers and the Bucks, where you get you use a lot of interesting emojis, a lot of interesting words, a lot of words that start with the letter F, and then they have exclamation points oh, behind I did. them. I, I, yeah, are you kidding me? I put the the, the Packers, I F them this whole week. Hmm. Last two weeks I've been Fing them. They're, t- they're, they're awful. Well, here's the problem. They're awful. They're costing you a trip to the Super Bowl with Bill Maher and Aaron Rodgers, those yeah. bastards. Believe me, I, I wrote that, that too. Yeah, okay. I've got the free ride to a Super Bowl in Glendale, Arizona. If the Packers make it, which right now there's absolutely no chance. Okay, we got a great show coming up. Another great guest. We're on a roll. I mean, when there's a timely scandal in the news, we are all over it. We're all over the fishing scandal. It's the energy from this studio, 8 p.m. Yeah. Kevin At- Connolly's studio, we Entourage, Victory of the Podcast, picking on Dave. All of the stock to Dave is always getting a beating. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Talk to, <laughs> talk to Dave. Thanks for getting the door for us. We're not going to pick on you because... We're locked out of the studio unless he opens the door. <laughs> I'll tell you what, we're not Doug Allen. I listen to uh, Victory. I'm a big fan of Victory, the podcast. And and Stock Tip Dave has become quite the character, but nothing but love from us, Dave. If you ever want to borrow my computer, feel free. I okay, it. I won't Thank even you. harass you. All right, <laughs> All right, so we have a great guest today. It's Miss Missouri. She's going to be joining us later from the Miss USA pageant. If you didn't follow this, scandal, controversy. Yeah. Pissed off, beautiful women all over that stage because they think it was fixed. That's right. Stock tip Dave actually dated Misinformed. It's a long time ago. I had Miss Chiff. Uh, so she's beautiful, by the way. Miss Chiff. Little Indian girl. <laughs> well, Cato, didn't you date Miss Oginist for a while? Yes, I had Miss Oginist. Of course I did. <laughs> Holy God. <laughs> we, could, we could go on. <laughs> Miss Cued. Um, yeah, I, I can't wait to meet her. I actually saw her. She's beautiful, by the way. Yeah. And I can't wait to ask her. It looks like she played a lot of sports. She's, she's, no, she uh, was an athlete. Division uh, one basketball yeah, player. Yeah, yeah. Very is, uh, sweet girl. I can't wait to talk to her, too. Yeah. She's so, going to join us. Um, speaking of sports, though, I, I, did you see that the ring? The, <laughs> did I see it? Yes, did I did. Did the Golden State, the ring that Jason of Beverly Hills made? <laughs> well, I did because Jason's a very good friend of mine, and I'm actually writing his book. Oh. Okay, so yeah, great uh, great night last night. The Warriors got their championship rings, right? They beat the Lakers. No shock there. Um, and it was funny. If you read the story in ESPN about it, you know, Jason is Jason Arashabin. He's Jason of Beverly Hills. He's the number one jeweler to the stars. He's got over 300 A-list, A-list celebrity clients. All right. He's the man, the go-to man. By the way, he showed my wife. She was in her office or his office a couple of weeks ago. He has this new necklace that's $3 million. It took him two years to build. It starts, I think, with like a 20 karat diamond here and it just works its way around. But so you're, can, you're, you're friends of his, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's in Beverly Hills? Yes. Let me he, ask you a question because I didn't know that. People have, right? his store is in the Beverly Wilshire. Are, has he been, was he worried about the looting? Back in the well, actually, there's still looting going on. Is that a concern for him? How do you get in shape? Well, I mean, I'll ask him, but I'm sure it's uh, got to be. But I mean, but his store is is embedded inside the Beverly Wilshire, right? So it's not a standalone store on Rodeo or on Beverly or anything like so that. So the restaurant is he's there. Yeah, you were were the restaurants there, and then you just like pack towards the restrooms in the Beverly Wilshire. Oh, I know. You, you can't miss it. I've seen it many times. Yeah, and then the restroom I've seen many times. <laughs> and then he's got. I've taken a three million dollar piss there. I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> the, even, it was spectacular. Even the l- l- latrine refreshers are made out of gold. This is amazing. They are over I there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, $3 million necklace. So it's funny because 
the first championship rings he made was for the Lakers back in, I think, 08 or 09. And then, you know, there's a mad scramble to get that. He doesn't automatically get these these gigs, right? Yeah. So he has to he has to earn them. So the Warriors, he's done all four or five right. of theirs. I don't know how many titles they've won, at least four. He's done them all. And he said, in the story in ESPN, too, said that he was getting text messages from the players after the NBA, or after the Western Conference Finals, go big, these better be spectacular. Yeah, and the that. pressure to outdo yourself every single time. Because he did Milwaukee Bucks, too. Oh, he did the Milwaukee Bucks. And here's yeah. one last funny story. So you guys got to look him up. Jason of Beverly Hills. And actually, he and I are working on his book. It's going to be out in 2024. It, it Part of it reads like a movie. It's just unbelievably entertaining. His story, he came here from Iran at the age of seven, right? Didn't, he made himself an entrepreneur, right? He was an extrovert for most of his life until he got to UCLA and didn't know anything about jewelry. And, and he, he turned himself into the jeweler for the stars. But here's one funny story. So after the Bucks won the NBA championships mm -hmm. a couple years ago, one of his clients is Drake. And Drake has a full court full-size, regulation-size NBA basketball court at his house in Toronto. Have you ever heard that? No, but he probably has the Raptors, uh, you know, if it's full court, but it's uh, it, after the Raptors. Uh, yeah, uh, or else he's got his own, his yeah. own logo, right? Um, so he has his own rec league basketball tournament there. There's like 10 teams, his buddies. Believe it or not, Drake's team won. This is two summers ago. So you know what he did? He called up Jason and he said, hey, you got to make championship rings for my team and they have to be bigger than the Milwaukee Bucks. So Jason made championship rings for Drake's rec league team. They were probably fifty or sixty thousand dollars a piece. I was gonna say, what kind of money is Drake <laughs> pulling down there? Jeez. Oh, Drake can afford it. Yeah, insane. But yeah, wow. just stories like that, incredible stuff. But anyway, the Lakers suck. And Bill Mars house has got a basketball court with the Boston Celtics. Really? The, yeah, the Boston Celtics. Why? Logo. Why? Uh, He's from New York. Well, because he bought it from Ben Affleck. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well that makes sense. Yeah. By the way, why don't you get on his podcast? And then you can tell us all about it. I, we got to get you on. We we'll got to get you on. Um, always, okay. always love that club random. Okay, so what did you do? You said you had a birthday party last weekend. Yeah, I went to uh, David Zucker who had his birthday party. Uh, uh, David from Airplane, of course, and he's a friend of mine, also from Wisconsin. We're devout Packer fans, uh, which are having a bad year. Uh, so we had a few people at his party. Uh, well, quite a, f a lot of people. Great, best food I've ever had there. Great Better music. than your wedding, because that's where you got yeah, married. Yeah, it was actually same venue. Say, yeah, different. Um, got married there, but we kind of reenacted the wedding too. We had there, and uh, you know, she picked up the rice and steamed it. Anyways, uh, <laughs> any celebs? Really, yeah, a list well, crowd. Actually, yeah, a few. Well, first of all, Jerry Zucker, who I love, is his brother. And if you don't know Jerry, Jerry did a, tons of movies, but of course, probably as famous as Ghost, uh, Demi Moore and Patrick Swayze, uh, huge. Um, it was just lots, lots of everything was entertainment. Lots of comic um, writers that were there, and a, a woman was there that I. Always have loved, and I always wanted to meet her. She was in Talladega Nights. I'll let you do a guessing game. Um, Saturday Night Live, huge long time that. cast member. Long time cast member. Sherry O'Terry. No, but you're 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 in the right year. Um, same era. Same era. Okay, same era. it's not Tina Fey. I she did a Catholic character. Ah, oh, Molly Shannon. Yes, that she was Sister good. Man, they Catholic had a run. Man. That's when that cast was so good. That's when you didn't have to worry about. Political, she was so, so political skits all the time, yeah. right? It was it was more of an actual entertainment show and comedy show as opposed to a political show back right. in the day. Remember you know, those that days? Was, yeah, exactly. And that was when that cast with Will Ferrell. You, you had it all, everybody. Would, Lord Michaels would make a movie about anybody. She'll make a movie probably about uh, Stock Tip Dave. Who knows? <laughs> anybody gets a movie with Lord Michaels. Yeah, right? I mean, if he thinks he could sell yeah. it, they'll do it. Uh, by the way, make sure you download and subscribe if you haven't. We've been on a roll with some great guests. Miss Missouri is going to be joining us in just a second to talk about the Miss USA pageant. Um, now, the Miss USA pageant, for those who don't know, huge cheating scandal. Or it's a, it's not a proven cheating scandal, but I think we know pretty much yeah. cheating scandal. Well, that's the way it sounds. Allegedly, and allegedly. We're going to get into all the details from somebody that was there. By the way, one last thing before we bring her in. Yeah. Remember probably two months ago on the show, you asked me or we were talking about who the biggest jerk as a celebrity that I've come across. And I said it was Bill Murray. And I told the story about what an ass he was to me. And this was in New York 25 years ago. Yeah. How about all the stories coming out now? I mean, yeah. he is getting crushed. Everybody I, is coming out and talking about what a, what a, what a, did, just did a disgusting guy I, to work with on the set. It's funny you said that. Just today I heard the one with Seth Green. Have you heard that? Uh-uh. Well, Seth Green was only like nine years old hosting on SNL. Uh, I don't know his exact age. I think it was that. He was sitting on the edge of a ch of a couch. And supposedly, Bill Maher was uh, guest hosting. They brought in Seth Green for a sketch. And uh, he told him that's his couch. And something. I guess he picked him up by his by his 
allegedly, this is what uh, Seth Green was saying. Mm -hmm. So he said it on air, picks him up, held him over a garbage can, and dropped him or something. So he said that was his worst celebrity experience. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. You know what? And people are afraid to and say I that because still, everybody still, thought Bill I Murray's like, so funny. I like Bill. But that's right. You've played in celebrity golf tournaments with him. Yeah. You have never, you never saw any of that at no. all? Not even on the fringe? No, not even how he handled fun, the drink cart singing. girl or something? No, no. Always singing. Mm. We have, it's a four-day event. So it's, it's a lots and lots of fun. Lots of singing, lots of bands, and lots of golf. So I never saw that. And by the way, it's huge. You're, you're broken up into groups. I was not in part of his foursome, but I saw him during, you know, during the course. Right. The so you event. didn't see him kill the caddy with that nine iron? No. Hit no. him over the head 19 that was, times? That was the Caddyshack blooper. <laughs> blooper some Caddyshack. Killing Fatal, gophers. Fatal bloopers. <laughs> Killing gophers. All right. You ready to get into this Miss USA pageant? We'll start talking about I it. I used to be. Are you kidding me? Misinformed? I love that. All right. Let's get to some controversy, some scandal. Do you realize our show just got better looking? <laughs> Holy crap, did it ever. Oh my Michaela, goodness. thank you so Michaela much. Michaela McGee in the house. Wow. Yes. Michaela, Miss Missouri 2022 just competed in the Miss USA pageant. Put the crown on. Put the crown on, please. Put the crown on. I don't care if they're fake diamonds. Put that crown. And by the way, is the crown real diamonds? The crown? Are state level crowns? Absolutely not. You think they're going to spend that much money? <laughs> Sor S Come Savors on, Missouri. Savorsky, it's uh, the show Crystal. me state. Show me some real diamonds. But who cares? We you, are the you show got me that. State. You got the tiara. Look, Look you guys are, hold on, you're asking for it. Just oh, oh way to go, Kato. yes. In the meantime, we'll do it. Yeah. You're going to ask her about the bikini love, pageant, too? The I'm bikini gonna, I'm going to ask her all that stuff going on there. And let's just see what's on her wall. She's coming back I here mean, with. Here she is. There's only. Oh, so there she is. Miss Missouri. I bet you that gets extra ketchup packets Damn. at McDonald's. That's a natural. You bring that in. You get free napkin. You get everything. I love that. I'll tell you what. You know, they're not cheesy. I mean, that that has a royal vibe to it. That you wear tiara, it well. Yeah. Very royal. God, yeah, that's, that's cool. And Congratulations. That, and so you actually. That's royal vibes for a royal girl. And you get to keep it. It's yours forever or not. You it's have to. Mine, mine forever. No, it's like, a, it's like a library book. They I have to bring they, it back to the next year. I always thought the crown, when you see it on TV, you see them recrowning. Right. It's like someone gets it. For, it's like the no, Stanley just, Cup trophy. You get it for that year. That you get to show it around, but it's not that way. You get to, that's so great. Let's turn it in we for some cash. You earned it. So whenever I have kids, best believe if I have a son, all of his friends will know that his mother was a queen and my daughter. And is if your son to wears it, he might be a queen. Hey, I'm kidding. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Michaela, strike that from the record. You didn't I, even hear that. Judge I, Edo I, would throw his ass oh out. Oh my God. No, she loved like it. That. She loved it. And, and, and how much, if you actually did, if you actually did sell, and maybe some people made offers, could you sell that crown? And what do you think you'd get for that? Oh, I think you could, and I think pageant fans would go crazy over this oh, thing. Yeah. I think that's probably a great charity item or an item if Let you just want to. I no, no, I'm just saying. I didn't know if anybody's ever yeah. done that in that Miss USA, Miss America. If anybody was down, to, you know, someone I'm has. People have sold their Super Bowl rings, yeah, so no. someone has. Michaela, you know, I don't know if you're dating anybody right now, but your your eventual significant other, you're going to be reminding them daily that who's the queen in that house, right? I mean, you got it to prove. Well, I'll tell you this. If they don't already know that they have a queen, then they won't be my significant other. Oh, yes. But, um, she not well only said. wears the queen, uh, the, the, the tiara, she wears the pants, too, in the family. I see. Boom. She's got it all going on there. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> you won Mrs. Miss Missouri. We're going to talk about the scandal at the Miss USA pageant yeah. in Reno here shortly. But let's talk about your background. I think it's fascinating. Division One basketball player, great uh, athlete, yeah. George Mason University. Yeah. Went to the NCAA yeah. tournament one year. So you, you did that. And you entered the pageant life pretty late. What what made you decide that you eventually wanted to do this? Uh, yeah, I mean, just like you said, sports have been my entire world. Literally since I was growing up, since I can even remember, my mom and my dad threw me into everything. Well, Wanted to see what I was good at. Thankfully, you know, team sports happened to be my calling. I played soccer, basketball, and softball at the varsity level all four years in high school. I was an all state and all metro in soccer and basketball. I had power five offers for soccer. I was probably a better soccer player than I was at basketball, but basketball was just where my passion was. So I went on to play two years at Missouri State, then transferred two years at George wow. Mason, graduated, and then did a post-grad transfer to Florida Gulf Coast University where I was able to play in the NCAA tournament. We lost in the first round of Miami, but by two points, I think the refs 
cheated us, but whatever. You know, it was like the new yeah. USA pageant. Yeah. They rigged that game. I'll you tell you what. Won. I'll tell Dang, you what. Just, you know, just like you, that. It just seems to be a trend in my life now. Your sports no, resume. But it was a great time. Great You're, time. Went on to play professionally for three years. And then, yeah, I mean, I got into my broadcasting career as sports anchor, news reporter. So pageantry was never really on the horizon for me. I didn't think much of it. Never thought that I would be one of those girls. Mm -hmm. But I ended up meeting the previous title holder, the um, previous Miss Missouri USA. Her name's Joy Forrest. And after meeting her and then doing some research on the Miss USA organization, seeing what these title holders have done in their careers and in their lives, I was like, wow. I really think that this is something I should look into. I think this might be good for me. And then I saw that it was my last year of eligibility. And I was like, you know what? Do if not now, then when? So yeah, I'll, I'll, I, what stood out for me when I was reading your resume, which is impressive with sports, is uh, well, Tom and I are actually wearing a jock and a cup because of you. Um, we were just, uh, <laughs> so what, what stood out for me is uh, that uh, you also have a, uh, a little history in criminal uh, justice and mm -hmm. I was involved in a trial, but I, speaking oh, of that, yeah, speak, you were. Speaking, the of little that, one. speaking of criminal justice, so you have a background in that, that cheating scandal is probably even, you probably are even into it even more than most people because it probably was a criminal activity. And I don't know what your, your views are. And do you think there was cheating going on? In terms of the pageant? Yeah. You know, I will say this. I think, I think just like in our criminal justice system, everyone is innocent until proven guilty. You know, mm -hmm. I do think that there has been a lot of suspicious activity in regards to the pageant prior to, during, and post the Miss USA week. So I am a person who likes to give people the benefit of the doubt. And given my sports background and competitive nature, I understand competition. Right. So I get that there's going to be talk. I get that there's going to be rumors. I understand that, but some of, again, the events that took place, the observations, the, what we've heard, what we've seen, what we experienced cannot be ignored. And I mm -hmm. think that's where we're at right yeah. now. Well, well, let, let, let's, let's remind everybody what happened. Okay? okay. Because yeah, you may have seen the headlines, controversy, scandal, potential cheatings at Miss USA. So this thing was just a few weeks ago it was in Reno, Nevada. Uh, mm -hmm. The, most lovely ladies in the entire country down there to, to battle for this prestigious prize with a lot of money at stake. Last week, we had the fishing tournament. That was a scandal. There's money involved. You know, you, you get a little suspicious because people will mm -hmm. do things. But what happened was Miss Texas, she ended up winning. Her name is Rabani Gabriel, right? Rabani. Ar Arbany. Arbany. Arbany Gabriel. And she's that Filipino. sounds like a cheating name. It's it's right there. The writing's on the wall. You guys are ruthless. <laughs> Michaela, I, I told Michaela, Tom earlier before guilty. the start. I told Tom before this, next time I ever see a judge, I hope it's at the Miss USA pageant. Golly. I don't want to see any more judges in my life. Please, Hawaiian Tropic, no more judges for me. <laughs> so she is the first Filipino-American to win. And mm -hmm. what some of the contestants thought, including Miss Montana, I know she was really pissed off. I Some of the other ones, too. They thought this thing was fixed because they they maybe see they saw some videos that had been taken in Cancun. You mentioned things that had been going on throughout the week. So were there things that caught your eye, maybe had your radar go off a little bit that you thought was weird before anybody even put two and two together that this thing might have been fixed? What 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 got you curious? See again, this is where I feel like I'm extremely torn in a sense because mm -hmm. I get competition. I get it. That's been my entire life. Right. I know that there are going to be rumors and favoritism and fans who are going, you know, extremely hard for one person or another for whatever reason that might be. I think where our doubts and where our concerns lie was it was within the organization. So for those of you who don't know, Miss USA organization and then the Miss Academy, the Miss brand are two separate entities, but they're owned by the same person, Crystal Stewart, who is the president of the Miss USA organization, but also the founder and CEO of Miss Academy, the Miss brand. Okay. And the Miss brand yeah. is an, it's a training organization that basically teaches you, you know, interview skills, how to walk, modeling, hair, makeup. It's basically pageant. Prep, it's a business, you know? right? I mean, it's a money making yeah. business for sure. They start them yeah. long and train them and get them in all kinds of pageants growing up. Okay. I get that. Absolutely. And so like those two entities separate of one another, completely fine. 
But where the lines get blurred is that the person who owns the Miss USA organization who makes all the decisions runs both of them. And they did offer resources to all of the contestants to do classes, Zoom classes, free sessions on for the Miss Academy. But the Texas USA, Arbany, has been working with the Miss Academy for three plus years now, oh, okay. has been tight making connections, mm -hmm. relationships these people who are tightly knit into the Miss USA organization as well. Got it. And I was so, just, by right. the way, I was saying about Arbany, I was just, that was allegedly, I, I, the name's cheating, you know, I'm kidding. No. But the, uh, there was video of Arbany with the owner having her hair mm -hmm. done. I don't know if she, the, per, the owner did hair of other contestants, but right there, I was on CBS Celebrity Big Brother, so I know contestants can be ruthless. And I know that you're spending the entire weekend, is it a weekend at Mystery, at the pageant? Week. A week. It's a week. So you're there it's for the entire week, week and you hear things. You're another. You you make connections. You get in a click with certain people, and you you mm -hmm. know there's different hangouts and people are saying things. Is that going on? Is there a lot of the girls going hey, like clicks, right? Yeah, a click of someone. You don't have to mention names unless you want to. But are they saying like, hey, I don't like the way that Miss oh, Texas. Oh, I'm sure. I bet it's catty. Yeah, right? I say it's got to be certain things. Got to be pretty catty. You know what? I wouldn't say caddy is the word to use, but I do think coming into it, there was a lot of rumors and Texas is a big pageant state in general. Yeah. So we know anyone coming out of Texas is going to be getting a lot of publicity. They're going to be getting a lot of media coverage. We under everyone who has a brain understands right. that aspect of it, but it was the rumors of a sabotage list. It was the rumors that Arbany had already won, like basically yeah. that they had already like predetermined. Mm -hmm. They paid and predetermined that this was going to be the winner. And going into it, of course, when you're trying to compete and you believe that you have a fair shot at the crown, you try to put those rumors and the he say, she say to the side. But then whenever you get there and then you, again, have 51 girls together and you, insecurity start popping out and you're starting to yeah. wonder, well, dang, are those rumors true? Because yeah. you start saying no. things, you start piecing it together yeah. and it just... It kind of just like started off as rumors, he say, she say, and then observations and instances and experiences took it to a point of like, oh my gosh, are we now just connecting the dots of what you already thought right. was a It takes on a, a, a life of its own, really. And, and I love the correlation you made to athletics because, man, if you're thinking in the middle of the week that something's up, it takes you off your game. And it probably yeah. affected you and everything you did that week in front of the judges. Yeah. But I'm getting this. This sounds more political than anything. It's it's like she had nothing to do with it unless she knew about it beforehand. But it was the 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 owners of the organization that that had this idea who they wanted to elevate into this prominent role and use her as a showpiece. You've got to sign up for this business for four years if you have a chance. Yeah, Think it, about it. That's a great a, selling it is point. A, and now them. I have a question, Eminem. Well, I, not I, even that. You say, you know, they sign up for this business. That's a, what the selling point is, is that she won and that she's been working with the Academy in and that's general. What I meant. If you want to get yeah, there, you know, start it didn't matter early. If it was for three years, four years, it was the fact like, okay, well, guess what? This girl came in. She worked with us. She put in the time. She won. She won Texas, which is one of the hardest states yeah. to win. Let's be honest. She came in. She won Miss USA because she worked with our brand. Now, I am not taking anything away from Arbany because Arbany is beautiful. She can dress her butt off. She is well-spoken. You know, I only had short instances with her where I was really able to kind of sit down and get to know And you know guys were her. usually exchanging blows during that time, right? I mean, the cat fights. No, is I mean, you're doing a bunch of activities. You're doing a bunch of sponsor activities. But like you said, as soon as you get there, actually, it's not even as soon as you get there for Miss USA Week. As soon as you get the crown at the state level, it is kind of like game on because you know everything you're doing is being watched. And you, and you think, I guess it's not necessarily what it's supposed to be, but as a contestant, you think, okay, every move that I make right now is going to determine if they believe that I am good enough, if I'm worthy enough to be Miss USA. Now, Eminem, I call you that because I'm much closer than you are, Tom, to Michaela. <laughs> I, I call you Eminem. That's just me, Tom. And I say that because I used to be a judge in certain uh, beauty pageants, and I traveled a lot with the uh, the girls that were in the uh, Hawaiian Tropic, different beauty, but still, mm, how I know, I know, uh, yeah. So I did that, I emceed <laughs> some of these events, and I, I so I traveled many cities uh, and many, many other cities around the world. And I noticed, now, do you see some of the, any seductive 
by some of the other states with judges? Do you see that? Are they asked to go out to mingle with judges? Now, in ours, we were, they had a thing where they had to go out with us to do, I mean, to drinking or dinners and to really get to know the judges and all that. So it's different probably for those tournaments. Is that same in the Miss USA? Or is it a thing where you do your thing and you go back to the hotel room? Um, I think for competition week, no, we are absolutely not allowed to fraternize, affiliate with the judges whatsoever prior to during the competition at all. But like when we were in Cancun, and I wouldn't say sexualize or anything like that, but you're around your sponsors. You're around these people who yeah. are helping this organization thrive and they want you to put your best foot forward. Obviously, if you're smart, these are probably some people you want to network with, you know, network with anyway, at least I, you know, I'm looking at it like that because whether I win or not, at least I can build a network yeah. here. Um, but for the most part, I will say for my class, at any event we were at, nobody was drinking, nobody had alcohol, everything was very well regulated and organized. I can't speak for other classes because I wasn't a part of those. Well, you know? How about the, the minute when the crown goes on, did you get, did let your hair down and just go, we're going to party tonight? No, because you got to wake up at four o'clock in the morning the next day for a photo shoot and do all your stuff. And you don't go to bed till three. So it's <laughs> like, you don't even have time I, for that. I, Tom and I wake up at four also only because we have a paper route. <laughs> so anybody, so anybody read papers <laughs> Newspapers anymore? are huge I here in LA. Read, yeah, yeah, people still read papers. I mean, you get a good workout, you have to hurdle over all the homeless people you know, I, to deliver the papers. I, I, Tom, I, I, Tom, agree with me or disagree? And Michaela, you can, sh you know, you have swimsuit competitions. You have, uh, I, w there's also, a, I don't know, some of the competitions. Miss Congeniality. Congeniality. Do you think they yeah. should have a sweatpants and mud mask contest? It's kind of what, what it really is all about. Who wears the best oh, mud mask and talk I mean, on a couch? A slacker award, right? Isn't that what it's really about? Because you kind of want to relax. I vote right now, get a mud mask and sweatpants because that's all I've seen a lot of the girls wearing. 100%. Yeah, Kato! I'm already ahead of the game. I'm big I'm big sweatpants and chill. So You've I, just been I crowned. Like You've just been crowned. Hey, let me let me take you two off your little uh, mutual admiration society here M &M. and talk scandal. M &M. I, I want scandal. Uh Michaela, the the walkout at the end. Because some mm -hmm. of the girls walked out. That had to be predetermined. Were they talking to you? Did everybody do it? Was that odd and uncomfortable? Take us to that moment when our Bonnie or Arbany got the, the crown and then the reaction from everybody else. So I think what people saw on the broadcast was a little bit deceptive to what was going on in real time. So, you know, everything goes on. Honestly, we can, we can say this once it got narrowed down to the top 12, but especially the top five, everyone backstage already knew who was going to win because we were kind of just like, Oh, well, look, it's all, we, you know, that's when you're back there and you're starting to put all the pieces together, all things, that are, whatever. Everyone's just like, whoa, like we can't believe we literally just witnessed this happen before our eyes. So it got down to the top five. We knew who was going to win. We're getting ready to walk on. Yes, there were some girls who were walking on and like, this is ridiculous. You know, like, how can we support a system like this whenever they already knew, like they, everyone kind of felt disrespected. They were like, they brought us out here for a show for them to make money that we're making no profit off on. We're really not getting any exposure on. They already had this predetermined winner. This is what's going on in our minds. I'm not saying by any means, this is the reality of the situation, but this is what's being discussed between contestants, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we get on stage, Arbany gets crowned. You know the way the stage was set up. There was a bubble. So there was like a circle in the front, a stage back, we were all behind the host who were hosting. They kind of did a little semi circle where the bubble was that put a divide between the contestants and Arbany. Arbany was doing her last walk. So a lot of the contestants walked over to the girls who got runner up and were congratulating them. So that's why it looked like a lot of us were kind of walking off the stage when really we were just walking over to the runners up and congratulating them. Then we get towards the end of the broadcast. There are girls, we were all on the stage until the end of the broadcast. And then when the broadcast was over, they took Arbany to go do photos on stage with the judges, with, you know, with the Miss USA organization, whatever those details entail. They took her over there. They told us to get off the stage to go clean up the dressing rooms. And it was time for us to go. There were a lot of girls who were trying to wait, me included, to congratulate her. Because at the end of the day, we all know one girl is going to win, mm -hmm. whether it was a, a suspicious win or not people were still trying to congratulate her yeah. but 
we were all blocked off and we were told to leave. Well, in hindsight, but I'm not going to sit here and say that there wasn't like in the mind, like, dang, this is, this is messed up. Sure, like, it's something a culmination of everything too. And when you add yeah. it all up, it just doesn't feel right. Yeah. And also in hindsight, yeah. it's probably a very good thing because the ratings weren't great. And now the ratings, now people are talking about Miss USA patch and it probably will lead to people to watch it more and more. And I don't know what, what network was it on? Is it, was it a, a it network? Was, okay. I will. I will say this. Whenever I was watching Miss USA Girl Up on, it was on Fox. Yeah, it was during on the week Netflix. or, you know, yeah. at a prime time. You oh, see prime it. time. Oh, that was a big prime, deal. It was like, it was like the football. It was the Super yeah. Bowl, you know, where for was real. Where like was people it? were watching this pageant, but now it's declined in popularity. Yeah. It's gone through a couple ownerships, whatever. It was on the FYI network and nothing against the FYI network, but people have to pay extra for that cable station or you have to pay for hulu live to watch this wow. so not only can people not even have direct access to this pageant that's supposed to be so so prestigious and so glamorous people are paying wow. for it now you know all this scandal is popping out and it's really making pageant fans question if they really believe in this yeah it's got to go back tom actually dated a pageant uh, he was dating for years misinformed <laughs> she was wonderful <laughs> She's great. I, I, I had, could never believe it. I had mischief. Mischief. <laughs> Go ahead. It's your turn. Okay. Kato needs so, a break after I that. Um, what What are the perks down there, Michaela? I mean, did did something great come out of it? Can you use this platform? Obviously, you're a big deal in Missouri, and you were uh, an anchor and a reporter on, on Fox 2 in St. Louis and probably going to start your TV career again. I mean, you look perfect for doing that. You should be a <laughs> sideline reporter for ESPN or something if that's what you want to do. Near. I mean, come on. That's <laughs> going to happen. Fox is going to snap you up somebody. But what what are the perks worth it? Do you get gift certificates, trips? Yeah, what are yeah, the Did you meet some friends? Did you, did you get close with any of the other contestants? Or did you just hate them all? Oh, I think – our class is so close, especially because of the controversy that followed the pageant and that week. What, Whenever I was thinking Miss USA week, going back about what I've seen in past, I thought we were going to be exploring Reno. I thought we would be outside, like really There's doing. There's nothing to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to go to Well, Tahoe. trust and believe, we, we didn't even get the opportunity to see nothing because we Just, were locked in the hotel for wow. an entire week. Wow. We didn't leave the hotel once, not once you, did we leave minute, the hotel. Wait a minute, don't they shoot any kind of B-roll of you guys in a casino? There's B-roll shots, aren't there? I mean... That you no. get to sounds like a hostage crisis. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like everybody's got a thing where they go, hey, no, we're generally they the showed around town. We're right? at dinner with these But maybe girls. they just didn't do that this time. That's very no, strange. generally they will take you around. You know, you'll meet, you know, X, Y, and Z important people from the town. You will go do a, at least a main tourist attraction, whatever the case may be. We did not get that experience. We were locked inside the Grand Sierra Resort for eight days. Some girls were there even prior to check in. So you were in there. Um, I think the most fun thing that we got to do as a group was a scavenger hunt, which was still on the grounds of the hotel, of the resort. So we never left. The only time we even really got to see sunlight was walking to and from the theater. So uh, <laughs> that's a question I want to know is uh, there's the top five. What what are the, you guys get like a swag bag? What are some of the gifts? What What's the most, I don't know what the first prize was uh, for uh, Am. Uh, is it I, cash? Yeah. Does the winner it, get a lot? What's is there for, money for, involved here? Yeah. What's probably the winner? Right. So the winner, Miss USA, is promised whatever this looks like: a six-figure salary, a luxury condo in LA, a Porsche for the year of her reign, and then I'm I'm sure she gets signed on with an agency where she can pursue a modeling career or whatever she wishes to do with that, you well, know? And then of course you're doing your community service. Impressive. That's really I mean, impressive. That's a good package. What's runner up? It's impressive yeah. until you know, you know that you're in LA and taxes hit right. and you're probably really thinking about $60,000 and getting flown around the country and making what money when you're really just being a face. Runner up which is, is not a bad, <laughs> which is not a bad thing. <laughs> that's I am not knocking the, the prize at all no. because clearly I was going for it. So it's something that I wanted as well. But if we're right. looking at the reality of what it is, it's it's not as glamorous. No, no, no. As no. The, 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 the week wasn't as glamorous as people think it is. You're you're really trapped inside that hotel all day at their mercy doing things, right? And you have to be on. You have yeah, to look yeah, good. You have to you there's no period where you can let your guard down, yeah, right? Because yeah. you're probably being judged. And the same thing too is they own you once you win that, right? I mean, you're 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 you making got, a six figure salary, but you're going where they tell you to go, when they tell you to do it, and right. And you're representing them 24 seven. And you're in your best behavior because you don't know every judge still looks at you like, oh, I'm gonna give you one them to think they're going to give you the highest score so i i think part of it is you got to always be on your a game 
because you don't you never know if there's a camera watching you you never know it's like nowadays just everything you do is on camera you got to be careful what you do mm -hmm. And I will play devil's advocate. I'm not knocking pageants themselves at all because I think um, to be a successful human being, you should want to always be on your A game. You should present yourself in the best way possible and put your best foot forward. And I think that pageantry does develop those skills and that mindset. But like you said, I can't I can't speak for what it's like to win Miss USA because I didn't win it. But yes, you, you go into this system and you become their spokesperson. Mm -hmm. So you're going and doing whatever it is that they want you to do. So what, is, what is the drop off from first place, the, the six figure salary to a Porsche for a year? I mean, it doesn't get like a, a second Uber ride in Chipotle or anything. What, what is the, what's the drop off? No, to my knowledge, it's, it's you win or you go it's home. I don't, there's That's, no like drop off. <laughs> if you finish so, second, you have to like valet so the So you Porsche being at forever. that for eight days, you didn't. You must have got. You had to have gotten something like, like in the gift bags or something. I, obviously, connections. Oh, we, got, we got gift bags. We, okay. we our sponsors. So, um, you know, I, I will shout them out. Pola Smile. They did host a yoga session for us. They gave us some, you know, teeth whitening and just kind of spa pampered treatment. Giovanni was one of our sponsors. They gave us a tote bag with a hat, a t-shirt, and a water bottle. So much fun. But they also were our official sponsor for our wardrobe. So a lot of girls got their evening gowns through Giovanni or were able to get certain pieces. Wow. So that was nice. Well, that's cool. um, well, my pronouns are she and yeah. her. I'm, I'm going to compete next year. I really want It's not too late I for Kato. He's got the I hair, want that bag. I hair. see the hair. I see that. I see that fluff. Don't make you me. Gotta, don't make me do a walk. Don't you dare me. Don't you say me in a thong. Kayla, they, Michaela, they could not get him off the stage if they tried. I, I'm staying on the stage the yeah. entire time. Michaela, I think you got the perfect attitude for this. You're a little bit more mature than some of those other girls, you know, and, and you went in there to, to use it for what it can provide you. If you won, great. Yeah. But if not, yeah. excellent experience. You get some relationships and you use it to, you know, take that next step in your career. And yeah. it's a great mm -hmm. thing to put on your resume. And to be part I, of the scandal where it was rigged, I mean, that makes it even better. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's like a blessing and a curse in a way. Because at the end of the day, this is still under investigation, okay? So Miss Universe has hired a third-party investigator to come in and really get down to the nitty-gritty details of this. And who knows how that's going to play out. We're yeah. hoping for the best. We, I know us as contestants are doing our part. And again, this is not an attack on Arvini, it's not even an attack on Crystal because I have not had bad experiences with either of those women and I am not in the business of tearing other women down. Right. But I think we stand as a class is we want the truth and we want better for the girls who come after us. Dude. And they deserve that and we deserve that. Yeah. And at the end of the day, they wanted Arvini to be their girl. They could have like spared us all a lot of time and money. At the yeah, end of the I, th day. I think it's totally. If, if the owners of this pageant did that, I think that's total corruption. Yeah. I think it's terrible. It reminds me of dance. Kids that are in dance competitions and, and those <laughs> dance academies will do anything to keep you in there. And then you got to buy the dance shoes and the outfits, right. sign up for the classes, and then do the travel tournaments on the weekend. Everything. I money. mean, you want this to think that it's above that. Like, these women are being truly judged on their merits, on their talent, on their personality, on their looks, <laughs> and, and let the chips fall where they may. What about this video that that appeared with a trip to Cancun? That's I remember Weeks somebody talking happened, about that. Right? Like it was filmed well before the competition, and she was <laughs> there. She was there, Arbani was there, or Arbani was there, right? Mm -hmm. So I will say that is when you asked if there was a time prior to or during the pageant where I was really like, oh, this is fishy. It really wasn't until that video was released that my antennas went up and I was like, oh, something is definitely not right here. Yeah. Because we all took a trip to Nizook, all of the title holders, except for Texas and Colorado, because they were not crowned yet. Okay. Wow, that's good. So deal. we all we all had our trip to Nizuk. It was a beautiful trip. You know, they paid for our our flights. They paid for our stay. We ate great food. It was a good experience for us to all really get to know each other and kind of break that wall of competition and really get to know each other as people at that time. Um, and so we loved it. We had a great time. And I specifically did have a conversation with Arbany during lunch throughout Miss USA week. And I brought up Nizuk and I was like, you know, girl, we wish that you could have been there. So we could have got to know you a little bit more. I know it probably sucked to see us all, you know, being there and, and you weren't there. And, you know, she came in and her answer really 
implied or she made it seem like, oh, she has never seen the likes of Day of Nazook, that she had, oh, you know, that she like was her. really sad. So she's a yeah, bad actress. She's too. like, I've never been there. <laughs> no, she she really genuinely, and I and I genuinely thought she was being serious. She was like, yeah, it looked like so much fun. I wish I could have been there for you. She even said to me, and there were other contestants at the table who can vouch for this. She right. said, I believe that the Miss USA organization is going to try to get something special going for me and Lexi. Lexi is Miss mm-hmm. Colorado. Right, because they were late. Because they weren't able to go this whole time, knowing that she was there nine weeks prior shooting an entire wow. commercial, not only for the Nazook resort, oh but also it's, for it's me. So rigged. Yeah, she she wasn't even this right. Texas at the time. And they have her down there. They have her winning two more contestant t- contests. Yeah. By the way, well, yeah. I do. Th- I do. I don't know timelines for sure. I do think that she was Miss Texas at that time. Okay. But at the end of the day, if she was Miss Texas at that time, her doing that commercial is a breach of her contract and girls have been decrowned or unthroned, whatever you want to call it for way less than that. So even if during our conversation, if she would have came out and been like, Oh, you know what? Actually I had a great opportunity and I was able to go as a model and do, you know, and do a commercial shoot at the Nazook resort. So I actually have been, I would have backed off and been like, you know, girl, take advantage of your opportunities right. because that is what this platform is about getting opportunities and taking advantage of it. But it's been the string of lies that have followed afterward that again, make me and my conscious and my spirit look at this situation and be like, Something Thumbs is up. not. So, M- Michaela, did you get a little suspicious when you were talking to her on Tuesday and she demanded to be addressed as Miss USA? Were you a little suspicious <laughs> at that time? Yeah. I, and, Stop and, calling me our and, Bonnie. And do you, uh, do you, this is an important question, do you follow our Bonnie on Instagram or, and more importantly, does she follow you? I do follow Arbony and I don't know if, she's, if she still follows me. But we did, um, when we were at Miss USA Weekend, we started following each other on social media. We never exchanged numbers personally or anything, but no, we did start following each other. 312-789. <laughs> <laughs> and I never, I never will unfollow her, and I'm not going right. to unfollow Miss USA. I, it, again, I'm not in this You're to be. Pe- still have trouble, Kato. I just, you know, Let her follow her. Start to get a scandal, Michaela. You, yeah, no. Michaela, you should be in politics. You rise above the fray here. Very, yeah. very articulate. You're too good for Thank politics. You. We don't want to subject you to that. Crap. Right. Get you back know, that's TV. my thing. Yeah. I am just a person who I, and I think it's a little bit of my PR background as well. I take the approach of, I don't want to cover up. I want, I want to be transparent. And I think transparency is the way that you keep trust between you, your clients, your public, your audience, whoever it wants yeah. to be. So I think that's another reason why this kind of hits me the wrong way is because there's so many lies being circulated and no one is being transparent about what's going on on any level, which is why so many of us contestants are speaking out because it's not right. Kato, well, do you well, have well, a hard time well, relating to a story well, where somebody's talking about transparency and lying? And, and, and I do. I mean, have fact, you ever experienced anything like that in the past? Were you in this situation? <laughs> Michaela talked hey, about cover. Go get the glove, Michaela, man. Oh, geez, go get Michaela. the glove. Hey, Michaela, please. 2022 <laughs> and three. Michaela's talked about cover up, and she's wearing sweats. Can we get the bikini, please? Forget the cover up. Jeez, <laughs> come on, Michaela. We're two hey, men here. I'm not- Hey, look, we don't need to shut the internet down right now. Okay? Nah, good point. That's a perfect answer. Strike that from the record again. All right, please. Hey, M- Michaela, get out to L.A. You belong out here. St. Louis is a little bit too small of a town for you right now. Yeah. I mean, seriously, you would you would crush it out here. Are you, are you planning to come to L.A.? You know, my ultimate goal is to be a game show host or host talk shows and this and that. So I would love to be out in L.A. if it was in my future for sure. I think you should. I mean, this is where the opportunities are. By the way, Cato's dream. Is to game. still be a talk or a game show host. Game show host, yeah. Game I did. show host. You played it on a, on a, on a sitcom. The, we're in the studio right now with Kevin Connolly uh, uh, played E on Entourage. We're in his studio right now. And I did Unhappily Ever After a few episodes where I was the character Happy Bender, the game show host. <laughs> so I was the I was the actor. I played that character in that show. Wow, what a small world because I love game yeah. shows too. Well, you guys are smart because that's the easiest job in the world. You take five episodes a day for a week and take the rest of the month off. Yep. Basically. And you get to have fun doing it. You don't got to stress anybody out. You don't got to talk about death, politics. You can go in there, have a good time. And unlike Miss USA, it's not rigged. Yeah. I t- Before we head out, can you put the crown on one more time? So we have a, a little intro here. Give us a good wave, too. Give us, give us the thing of you saying, make sure you want one degree of scandalous with Tom and Cato. <laughs> you guys are too. You got to do it. This is your take. I'll be the director. This is your audition and action. 
Hello, everyone. This is Michaela McGee, Miss Missouri USA. Thank you for tuning in. Just know pageants are a little scandalous, and maybe you should think twice before applying for one. <laughs> and cut. Beautimus. Beautimus. <laughs> All right. Just, let me do this before we get off, because I really do want young girls to know if they are interested are interested in pageants, that I did have a good experience as a state title holder. You make your experience. And that is on in anything you do in life, you are in control of what your experience is to, you know, for the majority of it. So if it's 90-10, it's like 90-10, yep. boom. So I had a great time. I have grown a lot as a person, as a woman in my career, in my network. And that's because I made those priorities for myself in this. So it is very unfortunate that all of this scandal and all of this corruption, you know, alleged has come about. We'll, we'll see what the end result on all of this is. But you, if you are interested in this, I just say do your research on the system that you get into and the people that you're going to be around and involved with, because that's going to play a big part in your experience. That sounds like an acceptance speech. That was really good. And by the way, the, the last part of that is if you really want to be Miss USA, to, uh, the winner of Miss USA pageant, sign up for that five-year premium package with the owners and they will hand deliver you the crown. Yes. <laughs> you guys are goofy. Yeah, that it, we are goofy. And, by, and, and I working in pageants before, the the great thing about that is the camaraderie you do get you you become yes. great friends and you just have a, a, a pretty much friends for a lifetime so uh mm -hmm. and uh hey I, Michaela I love doing man it. this was awesome thank you so much for joining us uh, listen we're going to say we knew her when you're going to be a star find us out here because you're going to be at ESPN you're going to be at Fox you're going to be at CBS you belong at a, a sports network sideline reporting maybe in the studio hosting it's going to happen 100% I like your style. Thank okay. you. <laughs> okay, Michaela, go get your workout in. And mine is hostile. Go enjoy your life as Miss Missouri for the next 10 months. When do you have to give it up? Thank you. May 21st is when I pass my crown. So it's the day I got married. Good good date. Is that anniversary? <laughs> That's right, when Michaela. you found me. And Kate, <laughs> Kate just got married this year. This May 20th. It's same night. Same night she won. I know. That's crazy. I know. I was supposed what are the to be odds? there. And, and, oh, it's that last question. Who was the who was the most famous judge there? Or the biggest name? Was there any big name? Big name. Who was the host? Who was I literally the host? had no idea. Who was the host? Who was the, who was the host? Host was Zuri Zuri Hall. Zuri from the Man from Uncle? No. I, no, uh, she does. Oh, um, she does a lot of E News and. Um, got it. Yeah, I think she was an E personality. Okay, got it. That's no, she's right. great, yeah. and I and I'm so bad that I don't know her last name because I actually really like her, and she does a phenomenal job yeah. in everything. I love it. Okay, Michaela, thanks, thanks again. Michaela. Thanks for doing everything to make this possible. Best of luck. We'll stay in touch. Get in another you. scandal. We'll have you back on, okay? All the way. Okay, stay with us. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Bye, Michaela. Yes. Appreciate it. Bye. Thank love, you, guys. Bye, Michaela. See you in L.A. soon. Oh. You got it. We're not joking. Get out of here. M&M. <laughs> um, uh, she's it was great. Deal. Yeah, she's great. She's great, great, great. Yep. I wanted to ask her some questions about the WNBA because she's an athlete, but we'll get that later. Yeah. I think she'll be on again, and we'll see if we can get to – Albert, Albany, all, you know who I'm talking about. Very hey, by good. the way, Cato, you know what the score is right now? 111 to 104. That I've got 111 dirty looks from Dave. You've gotten 104 because he's missing he's the Orlando here. Magic season opener. Well, we better wrap this up. I, I told them it's the only time all year they're going to not be under 500. They're yes. zero and zero. Enjoy. Well, they're doing pretty well right now. What is Are it? They, Are they, yeah. uh, they well. look great. Oh, that's for real. Well, I bet you know what they do. He's got a smile. They've got, got what's smile. Suggs, right? They got Suggs. You see how Suggs, Ben Cheryl. Suggs is from Minneapolis. By the way, Suggs and then Chet Holmgren, my former college teammate and a good friend of mine, he ran the AAU program in Minneapolis that brought those guys into what they're at right now. He ran it. Brian Sanifer. Wow. I mean, those Chet. two guys went to the same freaking high school. All right. That's insane in Minneapolis. Isn't that yeah, crazy? Yeah. And we had the basketball guest on. Uh, I. I your buddy, too. Was oh, yeah, Phil Weber. Guest. By the way, I love stories about famous people that went to high schools. Yeah. You know what a great one is? Uh, Marin County. I think it's Marin County in San, San Mateo. It's San Mateo in, in the Bay Area. Three guys that went to that school. Tom Brady, Barry Bonds, and Lynn Swan. That's a good trifecta at yeah, one that's, school. Yeah, that's great. It's amazing. Good, good athletes. I uh, went to a school that had great athletes, too.
Did Dahmer go to your college or your school? Dahmer was part of her homeschooling program. Program. <laughs> it was like, Jeff, keep your elbows off the tables. Oh, they're not your elbows? Whose are they? <laughs> and on that note, I we want to thank Michaela for joining us. Yes. Miss Missouri, she was amazing. Cato, you have yes. a great week. Good seeing thank you. you so what much. did you learn today, by the way, if I could ask you? Is there anything in particular you'd like to uh, leave our fans with? I do, After that inspiring, but with Michaela, I would say uh, always look for opportunity to knock. But with my luck, it'll be a Jehovah's Witness. That is Kato Kalen right there, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Hey, download, subscribe, share this with everybody. YouTube, everywhere you get your podcasts on the audio side of things. We'll be back here again next week for episode number 22. And there'll be more scandal to talk about. Love it. Please watch us on YouTube. Uh, One Degree of Scandal. It's the best show ever. And I do need that. And I'm not, I'm not being honest. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for watching.